One of the biggest complaints that I've heard about TP-Link's access points is that they're just too large. Well, now TP-Link has gone and done it. They've taken this EAP610 access point and they've shrunk it down to a more reasonable size. May I present the EAP610 version 2, a Wi-Fi 6 access point, but with a much smaller footprint. But does this pack the same punch as the version one access point? Well, that's what we're gonna test out in this video. But first, let's talk about some of its specifications. The EAP610 version two has an MSRP of just $99.99 USD, and it measures just over six inches in diameter and 1.3 inches in height. Internally, it features a four dBi antenna in the 2.4 gigahertz band capable of up to 574 megabits in total throughput and a 5 dBi antenna in the 5 gigahertz band, which is capable of up to 1.2 gigabits of total throughput. The EAP610 version 2 can be powered up by either 802.3 AT PoE, 48 volt passive PoE, or with a 12 volt 1.4 amp DC power plug, uh, which is also included in the box, I should say. This access point is an Omada access point, meaning that it can be controlled by an Omada controller, uh, which can either be like a hardware appliance like this OC200 that you see right here, or they also have software or cloud-based versions of that same controller. So let's go ahead and get this thing plugged into my Omada network and then adopt it in. I'm not gonna cover the actual Omada adoption and setup in this video, but I will put a link in the description below to my full Omada configuration video from earlier this year. Okay, plug in here, and we're gonna go ahead and plug this into PoE and get this thing booting. Now, how exactly are we gonna test the EAP610 version one versus the version two? Well, let's take a look at my testing setup. So I have the access points. I'm gonna test them one at a time uh, in the same exact environment for both access point. Uh, we're gonna start with the EAP610 version two. I've got this plugged in via power over ethernet to this TP-Link TLSG2210MP switch right here. And then off of that switch, I have the TP-Link TLR605 firewall as well as the Omada uh, OC200 controller right here. And then also plugged in, we have this shuttle PC. Now this shuttle PC is running Ubuntu 22.04, and on Ubuntu, I am running open speed tests. So I'm gonna be doing speed tests from my PC that's sitting on the other side of the room, my iPhone, as well as my iPad. All are Wi-Fi 6, uh, you know, capable. So I'm gonna take those devices and do speed tests, multiple speed tests each, over to the open speed test server that's running on this computer. And we're gonna do the same exact test for both the EAP610 version one, as well as the EAP610 version two. And then we're gonna compare the results. Cause I mean, you think about it, if they have antennas in this device, they're bigger antennas, right? You think that the bigger one would be faster, but this one's also newer technology, right? So. Which one's faster? I don't know. Which one can we get better average speeds on? Uh, well, we're gonna find that out uh, as soon as I'm done with the testing. I will come back and let you know how it looks. While we're waiting for these tests to complete, I should mention that we have brand new merch in the Crosstalk store. There is a link down in the description below if you are interested in either of these t-shirts. Uh, we have the brand new Network the Moon t-shirt featuring an astronaut with T568B flag trying to get some network connectivity on the moon. These t-shirts are super, super high quality. None of that sort of thin cotton t-shirt stuff and they come in sizes ranging from small all the way up to double XL. We also have our 2FA for the win shirt to show your appreciation for multi-factor authentication. We've got a lock on the front with our six digit 2FA code and we have unlocked it on the back and it says 2FA for the win. So if you guys are interested in either of these t-shirts, uh, links down below, go ahead and check them out. On to the test results. Here on my screen, you can see the results of my testing from my computer, my iPad, as well as my iPhone through each of these access points, through this little infrastructure right here, and then into my OpenSpeed test server. 
I should mention that the open speed test server is running off of an SSD hard drive, uh, but it also only has a gigabit NIC. So I'm not sure if that played into the speed test results or not, but overall it was the exact same test for all of the access points and all of the devices, right? So there is a baseline there in that I use the same positioning of the access points, the same uh, positioning of those devices, and of course, uh, the same exact open speed test server. So what did we find out? All right, so here's the first test. This is my computer, my main crosstalk PC, connecting over, I ran each test five times. So that's five times with the upload and download speed of the EAP610 version one, and five times with the upload and download speed of the EAP610 version two. I then took an average of those five tests, and here's what we got. So as far as the Crosstalk PC goes, you could see the red and blue are the EAP610 version one, the green and yellow are the EAP610 version two. Uh, you can see across the board, the version two access point is slightly better, right? So it had slightly better speeds. We look at our averages here, we can see the blue and red being the version one and the green and yellow being the version two. Uh, version two won out in this case. Version two had a little bit better speed than the version one. Moving down to the same test, but run from my iPhone, which is an iPhone 13, uh, we got very similar results. So they were almost comparable, except that if you look at the averages here, uh, the version two just slightly edged out the version one in both upload and download speed. And then if we come down here to my iPad, uh, we could see the exact same thing. We could see that the version two just slightly edged out the version one in both download and upload speed. Interestingly, uh, the download and upload speed for my PC as well as my iPhone were pretty comparable across the board, but the upload and download on my iPad, uh, the upload speeds were significantly slower than the download speeds by about half. And again, that was across the board here with both of these access points. So the final test that I ran was a five minute stress test. Uh, with open speed test, you can do a sustained stress test for as long as you want. Uh, I did five minutes, which does five minutes sustained download and five minutes sustained upload. Uh, and then I, run that, I ran that test twice uh, for each of these access points uh, just from my PC though. I did not do that test with my iPad or my iPhone because you know with the screen going dark and it was, it was just too much of a pain to keep that open. So here we can see the results of the five minute sustained stress test. And ultimately, if we look at the average here, uh, they were almost exactly comparable in the stress test. Uh, the EAP610 version two beat out the version one on the download speed test uh, by about, it looks like maybe 10% or so. Uh, and then it just slightly lost in terms of the upload speed on that five minute stress test. But again, we're splitting hairs at that point, right? This is almost the exact same results across the board for the five minute speed test uh, between both of these devices. So final thoughts, final conclusion here. Uh, I think TP-Link has done a good job, right? They have successfully significantly reduced the size of this EAP610 access point while actually improving speeds just a little bit, even with the smaller form factor. So I really love to see that. Uh, I don't know if the version one is gonna be end of life or not, uh, but I will tell you this, I would love to see this same treatment uh, maybe with some of their other more powerful access points. I'd love to see the size get down uh, while also maintaining the same performance or better performance with newer technology. All right, what do you guys think about this difference in access point? Let me know down in the comments below. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure you give me a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more videos like this, please click subscribe. My name is Chris with Crosstalk Solutions, and thank you so much for watching.